Watch this. Look at that cuteness. He's so handsome. making biscuits for breakfast this morning in my Breville toaster oven. No, these are not scones and they are not cookies. Look, I have proof. They are in fact biscuits. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 20. Not a whole lot going on today. It's already three o'clock, four o'clock, I don't even know, in the afternoon. And I've done nothing so far, other than a little housework, like laundry that you don't care to see, that's boring. So I thought I would jump on here and do the advent calendars. I've also had people ask me throughout the year about my low buy year, so I thought I would address that. I think I have before, but I'll just say it again for those of you watching Vlogmas. And then I've also had requests to show you uh, my SLG and handbag storage. And I did a video about that um, a couple months ago, but a couple things have changed. Well, one major thing has changed in my closet, so I thought I would show you that too. So that's what we have in store. Let's get started with the advent calendars. All right, with the wine, door number 20. We had a red yesterday, so this should be a white or a rosé, but it's another red. Did they run out of whites and rosés? It's fine with me, I tend to prefer reds. Cabernet Sauvignon from Fortune and Favors. And this one's from the Central Coast, I'm assuming that's of California in 2018. Nice. And on to Sugarfina. Something blue. Oh, I know what these are. These are good. Heavenly Sours made with real fruit juice. These sweet and tart gummies have a taste that's totally out of this world. They're little stars and other celestial things and different flavors. And then they have that sour sugary stuff on the outside. Yum. Moving on to the do-it-yourself advent calendar. This is today's gift. This is a small scented candle from Kendra Scott, and the scent is berry agate. These were on clearance on Kendra Scott when I purchased a few other things. Has a little agate in the packaging there. And here's the candle itself. 
It's just clean all the way around a frosted glass with the little logo on it. There it is. And it does smell like berries, so I'm going to put that with my other candles and include that in my candle review. Now let's take a peek in my closet. Oh, and my shirt, if you're wondering, is from Santa Fe, New Mexico. The first time we went up there many, many years ago now, uh, we went up and went directly to a wine festival, and that's where I got this t-shirt. So in terms of storing my many, many handbags, and I think I have about a hundred of them at this point, which is insane. I bought these shelves off Amazon and I'll link them below. So I have all the black bags on this shelf here, as well as some things that are supposed to be on my desk and some doggy advent calendars. And then I have two more shelves over here full of handbags as well. And you can see like here and on most of the shelves here, I have the bags displayed where I think they look pretty nice. But as I collect more, uh, I can always turn them this way and that will make more room. See, I could put another bag right there. And then all of my nicer, more expensive handbags, the luxury bags, they're in the closet up here. So I have these two shelves and then I also have this space, which uh, I'm moving some things around right now in that space, which is where this usually goes. These are two bags full of bags. Not entirely sure why I keep those, but my bronze Suhali usually goes right there. And that dog bag full of dog clothes usually goes up on that shelf as well. But that is how I store my handbags. And then if you've seen videos before on my closet, you would recognize this area, this shelf that I have a lot of jewelry and things on. And this is what's new. I recently added this shelf from Amazon to give me more height, which gave me more storage area. That's one of the things I learned when I lived in New York is you can create more storage space by going vertical, not just horizontal. So this is where I have a lot of my SLGs stored. The boxes that I have things in, storage boxes, like this is a Kate Spade that I got from TJ Maxx. This is from a Chanel cosmetic purchase. I have wallets and sunglass holders in there. I got this sunglass storage. It holds three sunglasses in a row, so nine total. I got that off Amazon. This has pochettes. And this has larger, like, toiletry, larger cosmetic pouches. Another Chanel box, and this has straps. This has card holders and small wallets. And then my little cosmetic pouch. And then some other SLG pouches. And then I'll just take you left to right down the row here. So I have some jewelry there. And then this is my little Henry Bendel section with some Bendel trays and jewelry box and different things. And I have the little Louis Vuitton perfume there that Becca gave me from Louis Vuitton and some of the little Chanel cosmetics. Little jewelry pieces and accessories. My bandos are hung up there from scarf racks. And then we have the big shelf and then on top of the shelf more jewelry and some pretty holiday bags and boxes. And then there's my giant jewelry box. I'll go through that with you next week. I still want to unbox another jewelry piece from the advent calendar. And then I have little tie racks where I hang bag charms and other little SLGs. And those scarf racks that you saw the bandeaus on, I also use those to hang straps over here on this side of the closet. And I hang my larger silk, silk scarves from these felted coat hangers. My regular scarves are folded and then rolled, and then I have them in these cloth boxes. And my shoes, again, pardon the mess, but I have a little bookshelf down here and then a shoe rack, another bookshelf on its side, and that's how I store my shoes. This is the San Giovese from yesterday. I've noticed that this camera takes a while for the white balance to get settled. So I'm starting out really blue here, but it'll be more realistic by the time I'm finished, probably, hopefully. Yeah, I feel like it's changing already, can you tell? I'm sitting out here in the living room editing. I just edited everything that I just filmed, and I've had about half this glass of wine, and I'm also, the windows are over here. I've got, got the blinds closed, and it's uh, 4.30 now. I'm feeling really hot, and 
and I have a, uh, a headache that was Winnie BLV. We were talking about Yota, no joke. Tap on my face, so I'm in focus instead of the background. I'm not very good at that, I always forget. Yeah, I have uh, a headache and, and I'm hot and it's a combination of the heat and the wine the heat from the windows. I don't know what the temperature is. Let me check. So it's 66 degrees outside right now. That's not bad. It seems like it shouldn't be this hot. I think the guy who's always cold in his room has the heat on and it shouldn't be on and I'm getting overheated now. So anyway, I may pass out during this video. If I do, y'all just call the paramedics for me, would you? So I was editing and I realized that I didn't talk about my low buy year. It won't take long to explain this. I started the year saying I was gonna do a low buy year and you can Google or YouTube search what that means. There are all kinds of videos on it, including the ones that I did. That all went upside down when COVID hit, just like so many other things did in the world. What happened was once COVID hit and I would assume that this happened because people were losing their jobs or people were feeling not so financially secure. People started selling bags. People stopped buying things and places like Fashion File and The Real Real and other resellers, their prices dropped on a lot of things. Some of the things people were selling that were starting to show up on these sites were things that were hard to find and they were at prices that we hadn't seen in a while. They were lower. These great finds were born out of other people misfortune which is unfortunate but I mean the pieces they've already sold them to fashion file and stuff they don't have them anymore so why not take advantage of the sales right so there were just so many good deals this year it felt silly to pass them up I was able to find a few things that I'd been looking for for a while at great prices so I jumped on those. And that also resulted in, you know, it not being able to go out and shop in stores. I did a lot of online shopping and I am totally okay with all of it. I got a couple of comments, not many throughout the year that seemed critical of my spending habits after I'd started the year saying I was doing a low buy, but I don't care because it's not like I'm spending those people's money. It's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. If I decide to do a low buy and then change my mind, I'm allowed to do that because it's my money and my life. So there, Yota style. The other thing I realized that I did not film yet is the doggy advent calendar. So let's do that. Hello, Roxy. Baron, come on. Baron. Baron, are you ready for a cookie? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh-huh. Say the cookie word and then we come. Ignore mommy otherwise. We're on the floor. Do you have fleas? You better not have fleas. So this is what the world looks like for you guys, huh? pretty different. Everything looks really tall from down here. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Did you just attack me? Have you ever heard of personal space? Bah. Bah. Help. Someone help. Doing hot dogs for dinner tonight. This is another kitchen appliance we swear by, the Cuisinart Griddler. We had this for years and then somehow the knob broke on one and we bought another one. That's how much we like it. And you can tell it has these plates with the grill bars and that's on the top and the bottom. But you can press these little buttons and remove the plates and the other side is flat. And the whole thing opens up and lays flat so you can do like scrambled eggs or pancakes. The top swivels here so you can do a panini press with it. We use this for a lot of different things. Love it and I have it linked below. Hello Baron, you already ate. Standing by an empty bowl is not going to convince me. And I got these King's Hawaiian hot dog buns to try. I've had their rolls before but I've never had the hot dog buns so we will see how that tastes. I'm toasting the buns in my toaster oven. And the hot dogs are done. I love it when they pop open like that. The buns won't take long. Hello, Baron.
And I like ketchup. And cheese on mine. And I've been told that's how children eat hot dogs, but that's how I like them when I make them at home. I like them other ways too, but at home this is the easiest, simplest way, I think. Now, if these were sausages, I would do a mustard and a sauerkraut, but they're not sausages, they're hot dogs. Bon appetit.